Worth Abbey in Sussex is home to a community of 22 Benedictine monks. Last year, they agreed to take part in a unique experiment. The BBC asked them to open the doors of their cloistered world to five outsiders. The aim is to discover whether the 1,500-year-old monastic tradition has anything to offer modern life. The five men were selected by the BBC from hundreds of volunteers. The monks have no idea who their guests will be, but are looking forward to the challenge. We find that people say to us that they've got more and more of all these superficial pleasures in life, and yet at a deeper level, they're not happy. We believe that what we're offering is, in fact, the answer to that dissatisfaction with life. The five volunteers will live under the monk's rules of silence, obedience and humility for 40 days and 40 nights. For each, it will be a challenging journey of self-discovery. Volunteering to spend six weeks in a monastery is not to be taken lightly. Good to meet you. Hi, good to meet you, Tony. Each of those selected has his own particular reason for wanting to be here. I'm Luke. All have agreed to leave behind friends, family, careers, while they go in search of life's deeper meaning. It is light. It's very light. I won't guess what's in here. It's a parachute. Ah! You're going to be out of here. And I introduce Abbot Christopher, who is in uh, right, the superior of the community. For the duration of their stay, the new arrivals will be required to abandon the temptations and distractions of the outside world. Nicholas. Perhaps for the first time, they'll have the space to really question their values and priorities and discover if what they learn here can sustain them in their lives outside. Tony, we've got a room, right? The bedrooms, like those of the monks, contain only a bed, a desk, a wardrobe, and definitely no TV. Monastic life may prove especially challenging for Anthony Wright, who works for a legal publishing company in London. The thing is, I can't hear you while I've got these on. Is that a problem? Quiet contemplation is not really his style. And, you know, I've been to Miami, New York, L.A., Barcelona, Ibiza, and, you know, and I, I go to nice places, I hang out with nice people. Although, like many people, Anthony does believe there's something out there, religion plays very little part in his hectic day-to-day -day life. I think it would be quite nice just to get a bit of that tranquil side. You can't ask me what am I expecting to find. I don't know what I'm going to find until I get there. I might get there and not like it, you know. might get there and love it. I might want to be a monk. You never know. During their stay, the group will undertake a crash course in monastic living, devised by the abbot and his community. Daily sessions will introduce them to the principles of Benedictine life. They will also be expected to join in the daily routine, eating with the monks, working with them, and praying with them six times a day. If they just follow that route, there will always be something to pick up here. Which but their biggest test may be learning, as all monks must do, how to live harmoniously with complete strangers. Something Peter Griffith hasn't had to do since national service. A retired teacher and published poet from Bristol, Peter rejected organized religion in his youth. I do believe that there is a God, but I wouldn't characterize or describe him, she or it in any of the conventional terms. <laughs> Quite literally, as Monty Python put it, what's the meaning of life, you know? I sometimes get groups of young children just to sit in here and I say, can you hear it? It's called silence. For some, just being in a church is an alien experience. Yeah. 
Tony Burke is 29 and from Essex. I don't come from a religious background, so I think it's fair to say that I don't believe in God. Most of his working life has been spent in the world of advertising, until recently. He's now producing trailers for a sex chat line. I don't really consider myself working in sex industries, really. I mean, it's just something I'm doing at the moment, and everyone wins. I don't have any kind of moral hang-up on it at all. Just uh, keep your mouth nice and moist. If I can learn anything from this, it would be what is good and what is bad. You know, if this can give me a really firm grounding and a launch pad for the next 29 years of my life, then, then that's a great thing. There are six times a day when we come together as a community to pray. They vary from 10 minutes to 30, 35 minutes. Part of it is to get into the rhythm of the prayer, and uh, we'll see how you get on with that. Obviously, Perhaps the most surprising um, candidate to volunteer for a stint in a Roman Catholic monastery is Gary McCormick. I was born in Northern Ireland, and I always liked the Protestant side of things, and when I was 18, I joined the UDA. I joined it more to be accepted than to actually uh, be involved in the troubles. His time with the paramilitaries led Gary to spend much of his early life in prison. Twelve years on, he still carries the emotional scars. And really uh, homing in on these, these things of distrust, these things of fear, these things of rejection, I can really uh, deal with it once and for all. After their tour of the Abbey Church, the new arrivals meet the community over Sunday dinner. It's the only meal of the week during which the monks are permitted to drink alcohol or speak. So obviously none of you are married in a physical sense. No, you wouldn't be. You wouldn't be able to if you were. You wouldn't be able to join a monastery if you were married. You've got to be single. When you first come to a monastery, you haven't met the people before, just like you today. Yeah. So you have to try and live together. You must get monk rage, surely. Monk rage. <laughs> Actually, you do occasionally get monk rage, but they're quite good at handling it. You experience monk rage from you. Few. Few. Yes. Yeah. Threw me over the hedge. You threw you over the hedge? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Try not to throw you over the head. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Buxton is the only member of the group with any experience of monastic life, but that was spent with Buddhist monks in India. Now a PhD student at Cambridge, Nick has been on a spiritual search for the last 10 years. Initially drawn to Buddhism, he has since returned to his Anglican roots. I go to church quite frequently, but a part of me doesn't believe in what I'm doing. Everything is, uh, you know, an intellectual argument rather than just a matter of faith and practice. And there is the sense that it's taken the sort of heart out of it, and I would like to put the heart back into it. Like all Benedictine monasteries, life at Worth is based on the rule of St. Benedict. It was written early in the 6th century as a practical and spiritual guide to monastic living. So here are all the members of the Worth community that have ever been. Uh, what does uh, the D-O-M mean all the time? The Dom. Okay, good. Dom is the traditional way of calling a Benedictine monk. Oh, is and it? it's the short version of Domnus, which is the Latin word for mister. All right. Ah. As in Dom Perignon. As in Dom Perignon, well said. Yeah, there's a man who, <laughs> what you don't know. Champagne lifestyle. What is the champagne lifestyle? Of course, that's where monks meet champagne lifestyle, is in Dom Perignon, because Ignorant, Dom yeah. Perignon was like a Benedictine that. monk. <laughs> the first word of Benedict's rule is listen, and silence is a key part of monastic life. At 9.30 every night, the community goes into the summum silencium, or greater silence which lasts until after breakfast the following morning and which the new arrivals will be expected to observe. 